Vitaly Klitschko. Winky right also going in. And also going in this weekend. El Terrible from Tijuana, Eric Morales. Marco feature on the left, Daquan Apaldo on the right. Travel Maison. Maison, the undefeated fighter. These two up and comers. Interesting matchup that we will have as Golden Boy puts up two of their prospects together. And let's go to the tell of the tape presented by the Gate. Obviously, the height difference is what Maison has tonight, Jojo. Yeah, Maison has a height difference, and he is a, a lot taller, too, and he has a two-inch reach advantage. But um, I don't know if that's going to be a key factor because Daquan likes to fight on the inside, but i like to see if Travel likes to box now because he does, in previous fights, he does like to bang on the inside as well and likes to knock out his opponents. Our ring announcer, Mark Frado. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Verona, New York, and Turning Stone Resort Casino. This is Golden Boy Boxing on ESPN, the Hall of Fame Weekend Edition. Buenas noches, Thomas y Caballeros, y bienvenidos a Verona, New York, Turning Stone Resort Casino, para boxeo con Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, ESPN y ESPN Deportes. Our co-featured contest is scheduled for eight rounds in the super welterweight division. It's brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing, and Hennessy, never stop, never settle. The judges for this contest are Eric Marlinski, John McKay, and Kevin Morgan, and controlling the action at the sound of the bell, the referee in charge is Charlie Fitch. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 153 pounds even. He owns an impressive professional record, consisting of 17 victories against one defeat, nine wins by way of knockout. Wearing maroon with black, a native of Pine Hills, Orlando, Florida. Please welcome King Daquan Baldo. His undefeated opponent fights across the ring out of the red corner. He weighed in at an even and ready 154 pounds. He is undefeated as a professional with 12 bouts, 12 victories, 11 coming by way of knockout. Wearing red, white, and gray, and hailing from Austin, Texas. Now training and fighting out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Please welcome Travel. Black Magic Maison! Actually, two seconds. Hey, good evening, Daquan. Good evening, Travel. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. Follow my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now. Come out fighting at the bell. Didn't even look at each other. Yeah, they're not going to look at each other, but the fists are going to do the talking right about now. You like looking at your opponent when you're in there? Yeah, I always stare down at my opponent. I want to see if he has any fear or if he's uh, showing any intimidation. I, I love to uh, look in their eyes. Maison wasn't looking at him. He's the undefeated fighter in the red and gray. Travel Maison, Daquan Apaldo. Apaldo used to go by the last name of Big Arnett, so that's exactly him. Changed his name last year to honor his stepfather. He said he considers his father. So the, here he is, Daquan Paldo. Paldo used to be in the A side fighter. This time against Maison, he's on the B side. Introduced first. That's got to play a little bit of a mind game, no, Jojo? Yeah, uh, well, Daquan said that it didn't really matter. He knows where he's at in this fight. Um, he says that he knows that this is an opportunity that he's going to take full advantage of. He's fighting an undefeated fighter, and he's fighting a guy that is the A side. Um, but I don't think it's, it's any effect to him. I know that he's 110% ready, but, I mean, they're both filling each other out. He's trying to establish their jabs. Um, Traval is working his jab tremendously. He's tall, he's rangy, and he's uh, using it. He's not uh, banging like how he usually is. He usually pacing himself. Yeah, yeah, you go on YouTube, Travel Maison, it's let me run out as fast as I can and just throw bombs and knock dudes out. And he gets hit with the right by Paldo. Maison keeps that left hand down low, super low. Yeah, he's uh, whenever he throws his jab, he drops it right away, and uh, Daquan, Daquan, he's already uh, countered with it with a right hand over the top. 
He sees the opening. Daquan's a smart fighter. Like I said before, he's a very uh, experienced amateur. So he sees those opportunities and he sees those uh, flaws that he's Hassan dropping the one, two. Snapping that jab, follow with the strong right. Hazan turned pro at the age of 17 in Texas. Back in 2013. And 2015, took a break, management issues. He used to be trained with Ann Wolf. Now he has a new squad. And he's in Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas with Ozell Nelson. He changed the pace for Maison. He said, I like, like it. It's quiet. I can just box. That's all I focus on. Oh, great one. Like I said before, Daquan's taking full advantage of that, that jab that uh, Travaz was doing because he's throwing the jab and he's dropping. He's not, he's not protecting his, his chin at all with that uh, left hand. But like I said, Travaz, he's a game fighter, so... Duquan can't take him lightly. He can't get too comfortable in there. He, it's still the first round. They still are very energetic in there. So you still got to keep your hands up and keep your guards up at all times because Travel, he has tremendous power and you got to watch out for him. Yeah, the power is definitely on Maison's side. If you look at the scouting report, the more polished boxer would be Paldo. Maison said he can box, but we haven't seen him because he hasn't had to because he hasn't fought anybody. That means he needed to box with. Opening round, scheduled for eight. Super Walterway is going at it. Verona, New York on Hall of Fame weekend. Second round underway. Travel Maison undefeated 12 0, 11 KOs. Taquan Paulo 17 and 1. His only loss coming to Eddie Gomez back in 2014, a fight that went the distance. Another Golden Boy fighter, Gomez. Paulo, more of a polished fighter, as we were saying. Joe, you've you known him from your amateur days, huh? Yes, I did. Paulo, uh, we fought in the amateurs a lot. We went to dual matches in uh, Puerto Rico, and uh, he has a lot of international experience, so. He is, the, I, I truly believe he's a better uh, boxer tonight, but Travel, he's the, the stronger puncher. So um, I, don't, I don't like the way Travel's fighting right now because uh, it seems like he's not putting as much torque in his punches uh, like he use, usually does because he's trying to fight on the outside and just using all arm punches right now. And uh, Daquan's not feeling any of his shots. He's just uh, walking him down, throwing jabs to the body, countering, the, countering his jab with the, uh, his right hand. So. Um, it's a good fight right now. I think they're still filling each other out. They're trying to test each other's power and test uh, what kind of game plan they're both playing. Solid right hand landed by Paul Bell. That woke up Maison. That might be the first time he's ever been hit hard in his career for Maison. The quality of opposition for Travel Maison early in his career has not been the best. That's what happens when you're bringing up a prospect. You're going up against guys you're supposed to take care of. A big test for him tonight. Born a Golden Boy matchmaker, Roberto Diaz. Daquan, he's uh, taking full advantage of um, the the way Travel's fighting. He's fighting a tall and lengthy, and uh, Daquan's fighting on the inside. And whenever he is on the inside, he's landing the bigger shots. He's landing. He's taking advantage of that right hand because Travel is dropping his left hand, and he's taking full advantage of it. He's fighting tremendously on the inside, and he knows that. Since Travel's longer, his arms are longer, the punches are not going to come as quick for Travel than the Quan shots. Maison, only 75 amateur fights, even though he started boxing at the age of six. Didn't go to any of those big national tournaments. He was known in the Texas area, but he wasn't known outside of South Texas. 
Turn pro at 17. And it's been easy for him. And then the business side of him caught up a couple years ago. Two years ago, he was driving for the parking spot at the airport in Austin, Texas. He's trying to figure out exactly how he's going to stay in the sport of boxing. You could see the way uh, Chavel's fighting. He still has a lot of power. He's not training the shots as like he usually does because he's fighting on the outside. But when he does land effective shots on Daquan, you can tell that they're 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 hurting him and they're effective. Looks like just loads up, right? Like, yeah. There's no boxing for Maison. Second down, winding down. I like how Daquan is getting in on the bigger fighter, landing effective shots with that right hand over the top. They're both exchanging blows, but uh, Daquan is fighting on the inside the way that he should against a taller fighter and landing some good combinations. Terrell Maison's corner, Ozell Nelson, his trainer now, this is their fight, third fight together, told us right as he walked out of the fighter meeting, he's going to throw a jab. We've been working on it. Well, two rounds in the books. Have you seen a jab from Maison? He is throwing a jab, but he's not a... Uh, being effective with it because he's just uh, throwing a little, little pitter patter jab, but he's dropping his he's dropping his jab, and that is not a good sign, especially because he is the taller fighter and uh, he's keeping his chin up. So if he, you're going to be using a jab, you got to make sure that either you're dipping down to the to the left hand side or you're stepping back, and he's not doing that because Daquan is landing some good right hands as you can see right now. There's a jab, body shot from Paldo. I think you're saying he just like kind of fainting at him with that jab. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, because, there's a good one. Yeah, Chaval, he is uh, just fainting him because maybe he is baiting him in because taller fighters they tend to bait the smaller fighters in with that small jab before they can open up and then that's when they land the vicious right hand. So you never know uh, what Chaval's game plan is. He is probably trying to set up a uh, Daquan where he can load up and land that vicious right hand whenever Daquan steps in. Bethel Duran, Joseph Diaz Jr., 126 pound contender, ranks out of Verona, New York. Main event tonight, Diego De Loya, Jose Salgado. Right now, you're watching Travel Maison in the red and gray. He's undefeated against Dequan Paldo, 17 and 1. Paldo was very confident, too, when we talked to him. He's now 25, father of an eight month old Gabriela. And you heard the maturity in him. But he's taking the sport finally serious because for years he was taking shortcuts. Yeah, he said that he was uh, taking uh, shortcuts and uh, not taking all the opportunities for granted, he said. Uh, but now that he is much wiser, he's older, and uh, he has a family now, he knows the opportunities that are presented to him, and he knows that he has to take full advantage. So you get to see during the fighters' meeting that he is more disciplined and very focused and is ready to get this dub. Yeah, new corner with Derek Santos at the Boca Pal in South Florida. But when a fighter comes into me and tells us, yeah, I didn't like running, like, um, is that what you're supposed to do? You got to run every day, man. You got to run every day. He was taking the shortcut, but it, because he was winning, he was getting away with those shortcuts. Yeah, because he was, uh, while he was underestimating his opponents because he knew that his opponents, um, he was taking them lightly because the opponents weren't that good. And he lands a good shot against Mavis on. Without smarts, like, nah, he didn't give me. Ten seconds to go in the third round. Ravel Maison, Juan Paulo. They're done feeling each other out. They're starting to let the leather fly.
height advantage to pull away from that right hand. You got to start fanning down before you go. You got to come off that back foot and push forward, okay? Don't get wild when you're talking. Get that thing up. Oh, I'm waiting. Top. Next, yeah. yeah. Daquan is uh, landing effective shots on the taller fighter, Travel, because Travel is dropping his hands whenever he's stepping back. Um, Travel, uh, Travel is stepping back with his hands down, and Daquan is loading up, landing combinations because he sees Travel dropping his hands. Our colleague on ESPN Deportes, Jessica Rosado, is dropping off a note saying that Derek Santos told Paulo get a little bit closer so he can land that right hand with more effectiveness. And as you should, because that is good wording from the coach, because Daquan, he's a little f far back. Traval, he has a longer reach, so Daquan is a little far back to land the counter shots, because all, all Traval has to do is just step back, and, and uh, Daquan's going to miss a shot. So he wants him to uh, inch a little bit more closer, and once Traval throws a shot, that's when you can land an effective shot. And as you can see, he's itch, um, inching a little closer, fighting a little more on the inside, and waiting for that counter shot. Last time Maison was in the ring, he went the distance with Evan Torres in June. First time here to stop his opponent. As you progress in your career, the fights get tougher, don't they, Jojo? The guys don't go down as easy. Yeah, the guys don't go down as easy. Everybody, the fighters are getting tougher. The chins are getting more tougher. So uh, you can't just rely on your power. You got to start focusing on your defense and your good combinations and a good game plan in the fight. When did you realize that in your career where all of a sudden you realize, you're like, huh? I think that was probably like my 17th, 18th fight when I fought a Rene Alvarado at the forum. Okay. Uh, he was a tough fighter, very long, very rangy, and I was hitting him with some vicious blows, but uh, he was just walking him down. Very tough fighter. So after that, I knew that it, I just can't rely on my power anymore. I got to start focusing on my defense, my craft a little more, and just uh, be smarter than my opponent. 17, 18 fight. He's all with 12. Pago in his 19th fight. And you can see from experience that the Quan, uh, he has the more experienced uh, professional IQ. Traval, he's been knocking out all his opponents, so he hasn't he hasn't been to that point where uh, he hits his opponent and the opponent is able to withstand his shots. And he's he's learning that tonight. I mean, Daquan, he's uh, took a couple of Traval's hard shots, his hard right hands, and didn't phase him as much as all his opponents has got phased by. He's not trying to figure out Paul, though, who's been a good job moving, staying with him. Paul keeps trying to hit him on that body shot. Yeah, Paul, though, he's uh, landing some good body shots, breaking down the taller fighter as well. But they're sweeping though, those Yeah, they're shots. sweeping, yeah, but they're still landing on the, on the body. So those shots are still very effective. Good match between Travel Maison, Dequan Paldo, Hall of Fame weekend, Verona, New York, Turning Stone Resort Casino. They say the fight pass is the pipe. What they say? What are you here? Fifth round of action scheduled for eight. Travel Maison realizing it's a little bit harder as your competition increases. Because Daquan Paul, though, this one pretty even through four. Maison usually has that high motor coming out, attacking his opponent. But Paul is sticking with him, giving him different angles. Travel is coming with a different game plan this round. He has his hands up now, and he's been the aggressor this fight. I think he's going to start relying on his power, seeing if he can knock out uh, Daquan. 
Turner Stone Resort Casino Hall of Fame weekend. Dali Klitschko, Winky Wright. And terrible Eric Morales going in, class of 2018. Beautiful weekend, kicking it off with some boxing. Oh, who's who in the tennis? Hagler, Hearns, Tyson. All the legends are here tonight. Marco Antonio Barrera. Joseph Diaz Jr., maybe one day. Hopefully one day. Yeah, you even said that. You're looking around like a little kid. Like, I used to watch him on YouTube. <laughs> I was all starstruck. Way to sound young. <laughs> I was coming in with a different game plan this round, and he is, he's being more effective. He's standing there a little more, landing a, an effective jab, keeping his hand up, and uh, being more uh, defensively, but also offensively as well. And uh, he's doing well this this round. I kind of want to see more activity, though, from Daquan, don't you? Yeah, I do, but I think uh, Daquan, he started to feel... Uh, Travell's power, so he's been a little more cautious in there because he knew he knows that Travell came in with a different game plan this round. So I think he's just trying to fill that out and trying to adjust to that type of style. Especially at this division, 154. Both of them came under for 153. But I think it was go the boy match with Roberto Diaz. They, you know, these guys come out looking good. We can definitely move them both fast. The hook race. Landed. Oh. Moving around. They both exchanged hits, yeah. it looked like uh, Daquan got the best of Travell. Some blood from the mouth of Daquan Paldo. She, even with the percentage of the total punches, how this fight has been. Now it's starting to pick up. Oh, great shot. It's great exchange. He's not saying no. It's hit again. Slips another. Referee Charlie Fitch trying to break him with 30 seconds to go in the fifth. Ooh, that's right hand from Maison. Body shot from Maison again. The Quan is trying to get on the inside and trying to land effective blows, and uh, he's doing it, but Travel, he's stepping back. He's taking a little inch back for he can land effective blows, and he's landing those right hands and landing good combinations because he is taking a little step back because he is a taller fighter, so he's able to use that reach and that distance. Maison Paldo, good one Great in off. New York. When you're the taller fighter, you're supposed to land punches whenever the shorter fighter is opening up, and that is what Traval did. He's seen uh, Duquan open up, and he shot a s s sneaky right hand and landed in and was effective with it. So he's doing very well now. That, that round, he looked impressive. Um, his corner told him to start throwing double jabs and landing a straight, uh, straight right hand right down the pipe. So I'd like to see if he's going to listen to his corner. Yeah, pick up the pace for Maison, who we mentioned early in his career would just come out like a 10 minute devil, just a thousand miles an hour throwing a bunch of punches all wild. They were landing, knocking dudes out. So now he's learned to box, to take his time, that he doesn't have to rush anymore. Well, here he is in the sixth round for the second time in his career. See if he listens to the corner and picks it up. Okay, Maison fighting in front of Tommy Hearns tonight. And that's the comparison from the way that his body is built. Not saying he's Tommy Hearns, but has that look, that style. Yeah, very long, very rangy, very powerful as well. They got excited when we told him Tommy was going to be in attendance. <laughs> Who wouldn't be? We also got excited. Joseph Jesus Jr. Uh, <laughs> was in the room. You know, Daquan is in, the, in that corner in a weird spot, isn't he? He's yeah, keeping he, his hands low. Yeah, now he's keeping his hands down. It looks like Daquan got a little tired and a little fatigued. Uh, 
Traval, he's putting that pressure, he's walking him down, and then whenever Daquan is trying to open up, all Traval's doing is stepping back. Um, so Daquan, uh, he's putting that pressure, dictating the pace, landing affected jazz, and sometimes even landing right hands, and uh, he's doing it in this round as well because he is being the aggressor and landing some good combinations. Waldo, for the first time in his career, utilized a strength and conditioning coach 100 percent you know in the past he's always worn out but a dedicated coach who worked with him on boxing he said his conditioning is great but you're noticing that he might be a little tired yeah he is either he's uh, getting tired or he's getting a little frustrated uh frustrated from that jab that Traval's throwing because uh Traval, he's throwing a little soft jab and then he throws a hard jab as well so you don't know what punches is coming he's sparring with boo boo andrade for this fight with paldo He also had a big break in his career. He's trying to figure out what he wanted to do. Called his good friend Earl Spence in Texas. Went and lived with Earl. As he was getting ready for the Kell Brook fight. Lived with him for seven months. Daddy ignited the spark in boxing. I can see it where you guys, since you're little kids, you're in the gym every single day. It's hard to stay motivated. Yeah, it is hard to stay motivated because you're constantly working out and your body's taking a beating and you're told. So. Um, it's hard to stay motivated, but what, motiv what has to motivate you the most is uh, you got to be self-motivated. Not only that, you got to start thinking about your family, thinking about what's boxing going to do for yourself later on down the line in your career. There's Oslinks in a good left hook to wrap up the sixth round. Look at me. He ain't doing shit. Look at me though. We gave him that round. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't stand there and watch him tap you, tap you, tap you, tap you, tap you. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be out working him, okay? You understand? We need to get right back into the rhythm you were in the beginning of the fight. You understand? All right? Don't be waiting on anything. You're waiting, all right? Okay. He ain't doing nothing, and he just went around not doing nothing, you understand? Okay. Boogie, baby. I got you. Let's go, baby. Come on. Derek Santos with the very truthful advice. You're waiting for Daquan Paul, though. Yeah, he is waiting. He's letting go. Uh... Traval engaged with, uh, you know, the pitter patter jabs and then setting up his shots with the right hands. Uh, Paul, though, he has to start being the aggressor like how he was in the early rounds, just like the trainer said, because Travel's not landing very effective shots, but he's winning the rounds because he is being uh, more aggressive and throwing those shots and being more, uh, you know, uh, active during that round. In control is Travel Maison in the red and gray. Fighting in the seventh round for the first time in his career. Gone six once. Most of the other times, it was either first round KOs. With three a couple of times, so. Yeah, I like, I like how Travel, he's still uh, calm, very patient, keeping his composure, uh, not letting uh, the pressure or, you know, those combinations or those punches of Defon get to him. He's still finding his game plan, still finding his fight, and uh, is relaxing there. He's starting to win the rounds. Now you see more combinations for Maison. Black Magic is his nickname. And give it to him as an amateur because the way he was eluding punches. Uppercut for Maison. Body shot for Maison. I don't see much of that tonight. No, but the thing about Maison, he goes with little tap shots to set you up with the hard shot. See? How he, like, lands a little pin up pattern combination, but then he throws a hard body shot. Or he lands a little straight right hand like that. But then he's going to throw a hard stiff jab or a hard third is the uppercut. See that? He's adding some good combinations because he's setting him up by just tapping him. But he eats a right, shakes his shoulders like, uh-oh. What a fight. It's good. Acting like you didn't hurt, but Jojo, you know when it got booming like that. Yeah, once people start smiling and stuff, you know that that punch got to you. It's kind of effective, so. Like, you don't want to say, hey, that it was good. Fooling anybody. You don't want to say, ah, you got me. You don't want to say that, but you got me. Yes. Unless they meant to go to the seventh round, a much better round for Dequan Paldo. Oh, 
I like the work that Travel's doing right now. He's still landing those pitter patter shots and then lands a hard shot. He's throwing some straight right hands, landing effective jabs. He's doing really well this round. It's like he's in third gear, though. You know he has a couple extras. Yeah, I think he's going to pick it up the next round because it is going to be the last round, so they're both going to give it all they got. Is that just that confidence that Mason oh, has? Yeah. Yeah, that's the confidence that he has because I don't think he, I don't think he feels uh, the punch punches anymore. Yeah, he's taken two good shots from Paul, though, and, and shrugged him off. Like, yeah, they don't look like they're being effective anymore. In the earlier rounds, the Khan's punches were effective on Travel, but right now it don't look like it's being effective anymore. So yeah. Travel's just brushing it off and using his jab again. They look good. They get yeah. the reaction from the crowd, but it doesn't look like Mason is being phased. This round could go either way. Changes from the two, you can see uh, Travel landing a good uppercut, good right hand, and then following up with the hook. But Daquan still landing with some good shots as well because Travel still dropping his hands. But Travel got the best of that exchange. Eighth and final round, the first time that Travel Maison will get to the eighth in his career. Daquan Paldo, he's been there a couple times. He has experience here, and he's coming out with the aggression. I feel like a fighter who thinks he's behind on the cards. Yeah, I think they both uh, think that they're behind on the on the cards because. It's, a, it's an even fight right now. It's an even fight, so they're both going to give it all they got this round. They know that uh, there's a lot at stake, so they just got to go out and prove to the judges who's the better fighter. This is the kind of fight we expect, at least the action we expected early on from them. Especially the way that Golden Boy has their schedule set up for the rest of the year. They can easily move quickly. In a division that's just names out there. I'm not saying that you could be fighting for a title anytime soon, but within a year, maybe. Yeah, there's there's some good names in this weight division, so it's just about uh, staying active and uh, getting the fights that you need. See how Travel's still keeping his composure. He knows that Daquan is uh, getting a little desperate in there. He's opening up a little too much. Uh, he's not countering as much as he should. He's just lunging in and throwing shots instead of uh, trying to set him up. See how he's lunging in and. Travel's taking full advantage by landing a stiff jab, landing some step back right hands, and uh, taking full advantage of his length and his distance. We were told that Maison had improved his boxing. It's a right there. Some blood from the mouth of Maison. Pablo's landing some shots, but there's not much pop behind him. He's not willing to stand there. Minute to go in the fight. He's all still bouncing around. Yeah, Daquan has to be a little more aggressive because he's losing this round. Uh, he's letting this uh, fight get away from him because he's not being aggressive as much as he should right now. It is the last round. You know that it's a, it's like a tough fight. You step on it, right? Yeah, you got to step on it, man. You got to bite down and start fighting. There it is. Good right hand. See, that was a good counter right hand from Daquan. But it's one at a time. But it's only one at a time. Yeah, you should. After that shot, you should probably throw a couple body shots on the inside. That's what you would want to see from Daquan Moore of tonight. Because yes. he was able to land a right hand. He was in the beginning of the fight. He was landing some good shots, landing some good body shots in, in the beginning of the fight. Uh, but then after that, it looked like uh, Travel was more composed in there and started uh, coming with a different game plan, switched it up a little bit, but then uh, started fighting on the outside again. Good combination. Good fight, fun fight, Travel yeah. Maison, Daquan Paldo. We're gonna go the distance on Hall of Fame weekend. As Paldo puts his hand up, they shake hands. They didn't look at each other in the beginning of the fight. Travel Maison, they both go to the corner, they stand up. Oh, 
Hall of Fame weekend. Hall of Fame weekend in Verona, New York. Who's who of boxing in attendance? Irish Mickey Ward, fan favorite. Lights out, James Tony. Magic Man, Antonio Tarver. Need some love. That's just some of the boxers in attendance tonight. Let's look at the highlights from our opening bout with Travel Maison and Dequan Paldo. Uh, highlights. Uh you can see that Travel was using his length, landing some good combinations on the outside, landing good right hands, establish, establishing his jab. Dequan started getting the, the best of them in the in the beginning of the, of the fight, but it uh, seemed like Travel started adapting and adjusting to Dequan's style and landed some effective shots. Yeah, the punch stats thrown brought to you by Tecate. You know, they're even the percentage wise, but you saw a much busier Travel Maison tonight. Yes, it was an even fight. I personally thought it was an even fight. Um, Dequan started winning the earlier rounds, but Travel he started adjusting, started using his length, started using his distance a lot more, and uh, started picking it up and winning the, the later rounds. So it was a close fight, 50-50 fight, I thought. A close fight. Let's see what the judges had to say. As our man in the ring, Mark Frado, has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Turning Stone, let's get a big Hall of Fame weekend round of applause for these two warriors. <laughs> Having gone all eight rounds, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Judges John McKay and Kevin Morgan scored the contest 77-75. Judge Eric Marlinski saw it 78-74. All three judges in favor of your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated from Austin, Texas, Travel Black Magic Maison. Winner by unanimous decision, Travel Maison. Second time in his career, he doesn't go and knock out his opponent, but a big learning experience for him. As Maison, you know, got a little bit of booze around here, but you can see some, you know, the face doesn't exactly show like a fighter who's too excited. Yeah, I mean, it was Travel's um, second uh, win by unanimous decision. You can't knock out everybody, and this was a good learning experience for both fighters, but for Travel because now he knows that he has to go back to the drawing board, got to go back to training and uh, start uh, boxing and start focusing on more boxing and start trying to rely on the power out as much. He did well this fight. He started fighting on the outside, he started using his right hands and being effective with it. Uh, it was a good solid win for him. And uh, now it's on to bigger and better things. Yeah, the biggest test of his career. He goes and talks to Mike Tyson 
victory for Travell Mazon. A busy weekend of boxing.